So, all right. So we're making a, a more uh, American pale ale, not not an IPA. Um, pale ale. And the ingredients are going to be about 23 liters of water, um, filtered or spring. Um, you use seven pounds of malt, which this is already, yeah, we've already poured that in. Two of those. So right now we've got the malt in here, boiling. So when we start the brew off, or the wort, we're gonna boil the, get the 23 liters up to heat. We're gonna add the greens right away, which is about a pound, half a pound to a pound of greens. Basically suits the taste, it gives the beer a uh, body character. Um, add the grains, boil that for about five minutes, and then we're gonna add the malt. Grains are split, right? The grains are, are yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're milled, yep. okay? So you don't wanna chop them, you wanna sort of crush them and mill them. And um, once that comes up, once the water comes up to temperature, about 150 degrees, let's say, but I usually just eyeball it at a low, rolling boil, okay, a low boil. Then you're gonna add the malt. And so I'll add two liters of malt. And in this case, it's a pale malt, uh, barley malt. And then one pound of spray malt, which is a dry uh, malt, which gives the beer further uh, flavor and, uh, and character and body. And basically just distribute it equally throughout the pots. Uh, you gotta make sure the pots are copper clad or clad on the bottom so the malt doesn't burn. Um, and that's important. You wanna keep that low rolling boil running probably for about five, 10 minutes. And once we get to that temperature, to the 150 degrees, we're gonna add the hops, the bittering hops. So the hops, in this case, they're homegrown. Uh, these are uh, Holler Tower uh, hops. Uh, for the uh, bittering. It's a milder hop and then the finishing hop is going to be a, um, uh, a Cascade which is a higher a uh, alpha beta acid. The hollow tower is a lower alpha beta acid, it's about four to five percent. The um, Cascade is about six, seven percent, uh, in some cases eight percent. And we're going to boil so we're gonna go back to the bittering hops. We're gonna add about one ounce of, if it's dry, uh, one and a half to two ounces. In this case, it's gonna be wet hop. So this is gonna be a wet hop beer. And um, the other thing you wanna check for the hops are the lupulins. So you wanna make sure that the, you can see the yellow in the, in the hops, that's the yellow uh, oil. Those are the oils that, or that allow the oils come out into the into the beer but you don't want to overheat it because then you start losing uh, some of the aromatic qualities of the of the hop so you want to keep that low roll and ball I probably go around 150 or less um, uh, very low you can add the hops earlier in, in the stage so when the water's you know maybe 90 degrees that sort of thing some say that it gives it a, a uh, it takes away some of the bitterness um, but that's sort of uh, subjective. So this is going to boil for about 40 minutes to an hour. And then after the hour, which we're going to time with the stove, uh, we're going to add the finishing hops, which is the Cascade. And uh, the Cascade will give it a little bit of a more of a punch uh, with the, uh, the bittering and the uh, aromatics. How long do you put the Cascade in for? Uh, Cascade is, we can leave the Cascade in for anywhere between five to, to uh, 30 minutes, even up to half an hour, depending how bitter uh, you want the beer. Um, in this case, for a pale ale, five to 10 minutes. And then uh, let that, the, what's important is that temperature remains at that low rolling boil and for the five minutes, and then we shut off the stove, we're gonna pull everything off, and then we're gonna cool it down. And I'm gonna add some there. Boiling.
what I find is when it's at the right temperature, you get that sort of uh, swirling, cascading action going on in the pot. Okay, so it kind of boils and then settles, boils and settles. So that's that's at a pretty good temperature there. So, in this batch, we're going to add some grapefruit, which is the zest of the grapefruit. And I've got a file from Lee Valley. Great, uh, great tool. Lee Valley, Toronto. And uh, so I usually put in about two, two grapefruit amounts. And also want to mention the, the uh, grains are uh, two row. And uh, versus a crystal or a darker grain, the two row is a pale uh, barley. And uh, it gives the bear a lighter, lighter look. You can add uh, orange zests, mandarin, and I usually add the, uh, the grapefruit about halfway through the uh, hot, the uh, during hot boil. Actually, this, uh, this got a really nice color. So you can see that sort of light amber color. And finding the right temperatures. Finishing hops. All right. There we go. This is the, uh, what is this again? I forget. No, this is uh, Cascade. 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 Going in. I'm going to add to this one, nice rolling boil. Give that a little stir. Shut her down. We've uh, boiled the uh, finishing hops for about 20 minutes in this case and take off the stove right away. Run it through a chiller, which is basically copper coil. Um, put that right in the pot and chill it down to about 80 degrees and then we'll pour it into the carboy uh, at it's about 80 degrees and then add the yeast. The, the boil is cooled and pour it into the uh, carboy. This also aer aerates the uh, the wort, so you need some oxygen in there for the yeast. Uh, I've got a temperature gauge. There's some hops going in. That's fine. I got a temperature gauge that uh, will read the temperature, which is probably at this point slightly below 80. Okay, so this is the final result. Uh, we poured the wort into the carboy. Uh, we had the temperature at 70, it was actually around 79 degrees. And these are just temperature, rough into temperature indicators, and they just discolor the temperature that it's, uh, it's presently at. Uh, we've added the uh, yeast, and after about a few hours, it'll begin to boil uh, or ferment as it's doing right now. And you can see that by the, uh, the stop valve here, or check valve. Uh, which allows the uh, carbon dioxide to escape but won't allow any oxygen in because at this point you don't want any more oxygen uh, coming into the into the uh, brew and we leave that in the carboy for three weeks and you can either um, 
after one week, you can either transfer it into another carboy, which is recommended, but uh, I like to keep it um, clean and I basically let it settle and I'll bottle it after three weeks and then let it sit in the bottles. Um, when we get to the uh, priming stage, um, basically that's just before you bottle, you prime it with the sugar or any malt, honey, whatever you prefer, and, uh, and bottle it. And that way it'll carbonate inside the bottle. Okay?